Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. All right, people. Bit of news. Bit of news. Liam Smith, Chris Eubank Jr. That fight has now officially been announced. January the 21st in Manchester. Now, here's the worrying part. This is the part that's just a bit annoying. It's going to be on pay-per-view Sky Sports box office. That's the only thing. I mean, Liam Williams versus Chris Eubank Jr. There was talk of that originally when it was being announced, being on pay-per-view, but it didn't happen. I was kind of hoping they do the same with this because I don't... I love this fight. It's a great fight. I think, you know, stylistically you would say that Liam Smith is tailor-made for Eubank Jr. The only thing is, though, is Liam Smith... Uh, he's fresher than an Arthur Abraham... Because when Abraham fought Eubank, he'd seen better days. He's better than a Nick Blackwell, a Spike O'Sullivan. He's more sophisticated with his pressure. And he's only really ever been beaten by, you know... He lost to that Russian guy whose name escapes me in May of last year. But really, you know, look at that fight. Go back and look at that fight and you tell me Liam Smith lost that fight. He didn't lose that fight. He won that fight. He just didn't get the decision. He lost a clear decision over 12 rounds to Jaime Munguia. There was no dispute in that. Although, to be fair, the scorecards were a bit wider than the fight actually was. But he was he didn't win it. But it was, he was more competitive in that than I think a lot of us thought he would be. And, of course, he obviously got stopped against Canelo in Texas all them years ago in a stadium. So he's only really lost to very, very good world-level opponents. So it's going to be interesting to see him against Eubank. Now, Eubank, historically, he has loved the pressure fighters like Liam Smith. People who come forward... They, you know, fight behind the high guard. They square their shoulders up a bit. He's made a career out of landing uppercuts, big uppercuts, big powerful uppercuts on guys who come in with a style like that. But again, he's never fought anyone as good, I think, with pressure fighting skills or as fresh as Liam Smith. And Liam Smith's not the freshest, but he's certainly a lot fresher than guys like Arthur Abraham. So I like this fight. I think it's going to be a fun fight. I think that... What Wasserman are doing and what Sky are doing is very smart from a marketing point of view because obviously Chris Eubank Jr. with the whole Conor Ben debacle, Eubank came out of that looking like, you know, he came out of that with whether even fight and his stock rose because quite rightfully, you know, he was made to make weight. Yeah, well, he was told he had to make a very low weight and a rehydration clause. He still actually made the weight on the Saturday, even though the fight was binned on the Friday. And the whole thing with Conor Ben and I think the way Eubank sold that fight with the 60% t-shirts and everything like that, in a way, I don't know, did he try and play the villain and he ended up endearing himself to the fans? It's, it's a weird one. But Eubank, his stock has risen even without him fighting. So for Sky and, and Boxer and obviously Wasserman, it makes sense to get Eubank out as quick as you can just to make the most of the publicity, I guess. And, and the fact that his name has got more traction on it now than it had before. So for me, it, it makes sense, to be honest, which it does. January is shaping up to be a good month because we obviously we have this fight. We have um, Viterbia versus Yard the following week in London. And then obviously, in I would imagine it's going to be in Glasgow or Edinburgh, somewhere like that. We're going to have Josh Taylor versus Jack Cattrall. Allegedly, that's going to be on pay-per-view as well. That's what the rumor is anyway. I don't know would Sky do that though. I don't know if they would be audacious enough to do essentially back to back pay per views. You know, they're not we they're not weekly. You know, obviously it's not, but they're only a fortnight apart. So, would they be that audacious to do that? I don't think they would. I think they'll put Jack Cattrall and Josh Taylor. It doesn't deserve to be on pay per view. Truth be told, Jack Cattrall, Josh Taylor. Uh, you know, I want to see the rematch. I like Josh Taylor. I like Jack Cattrall, but it doesn't deserve to be on pay per view, in my opinion, anyway. Eubank versus Liam Smith. Does it deserve to be on pay-per-view? I would say no. And to be honest with you, Sky with pay-per-views, they really don't have the depth in terms of their stable of fighters to really warrant pay-per-views, you know, because this isn't... It's a good fight, but it's not a fight that, like, you could turn around and say, well, you know, it, you know you're going to be clamoring to watch it on pay-per-view. For me, it doesn't really justify pay-per-view. And boxer stable... I just don't know, are they going to, like, what are they going to put on the undercard, you know? And you have to think about that with Josh Taylor as well. I mean, how could you justify two pay-per-views, essentially within a fortnight and one another, without having a semi-decent undercard for both? And it's not to say they have bad fighters, Sky. They don't. They have some pretty decent fighters. But 
the way they've been matching, you know, their matchmaking has been suspect. You know, it's not been that they've been matching them bad. It's just been that the guys they've been fighting have been absolute cream puffs. So I wonder if Ben Shalom and Boxer are going to... Although saying that, Wasman have a decent enough stable. You know, they got guys like Lyndon Arthur, you know. Um, I was going to say, you know, they have guys like Josh Kelly, but he's going to fight Troy Williams. I think he's going to get bet, so he won't be out anytime soon. But, yeah, let, let's just wait and see. But I, I'm not overly happy that's going to be on pay-per-view. But it's a good fight nonetheless. I, I like this fight. I think that it makes sense. You know, when Eubank or when Liam Smith joined Boxer originally back in the summer, I kind of thought, well, this is before obviously Eubank agreed to fight Ben. I kind of thought, well, like, logically, he would fight Liam Smith next because he's just joined Boxer and, you know, just logically it seems the fight to make. I wonder if Boxer and, well, say Boxer because Boxer are just working with this event. There's really Wasman who promote Chris Eubank Jr. Are they looking down the line? to get the Billy Joe fight, because Billy Joe was reported to come back next year, you know, I mean, he still looks in terrible shape, but AO probably could be the summer before he gets back, would they look to just do a two-fight plan for Eubank in 2023, which is, because at the end of the day, like, he'll get a deep, well, he obviously is looking for a decent amount of money if this fight's going to be on pay-per-view, and, you know, Eubank versus Ben, Eubank versus Ben is still a bigger fight, in my opinion, than Billy Joe Saunders, I do. I, I do think that is a bigger fight, but I think Eubank will look... Will, Eubank has beef with Saunders. You could say he's got beef with Ben. Does he really? Yeah, Ben has done what he's done. You know, well, yeah. I mean, he failed the drugs test. The whole thing happened the way it did. But him and Billy Joe really don't like one another. And I think he'd want to right that wrong of the loss. He'll never get a chance to do it against George Gross, but he may get a chance to do it against Billy Joe Saunders. And Sky might look to do that. Who knows? But let me know your thoughts. Liam Smith, Chris Eubank Jr., January 21st. January is normally a quiet month. Even in, even pre the old you-know-what, um, January was never really a month where there was much boxing on. You know, 2019, there wasn't much on. 2018, there wasn't a great deal on. So it's never been a month where there's been a lot of boxing. There's a lot of reasons for that. You know, Christmas having just gone, you know, most people would have spent all their money on Christmas, fires making weight just after Christmas, etc., but this year is shaping up to be a good January. So I've always found like 2017 was a good January. And as I've said several times, that year was brilliant. And it followed an absolute crap year in 2016. Hopefully 2023 is going to be much the same. We've had a horrible year for boxing this year. Hopefully next year it's going to be much better. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Because when boxing flourishes, the whole scene flourishes, you know. And the channel's been doing good this year in spite of everything that's happened in boxing. This channel's been doing very good this year. So if we have a really good year for boxing next year, 20K by the end of the year, who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'll leave you with that, lads and lassies. Smash the like button if you could. If you subscribe if you haven't already. For now, lads and lassies, I'll talk to you. Peace.